Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, we're going to be going over trigeminal neuralgia, also known as tic de la rue. Now, before we get started, as always, I'm going to ask you to please support me and support this channel by liking this video. You're going to love the video, so go ahead and press that like button now so you don't forget. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And don't forget, I'm now offering next generation NCLEX reviews, private tutoring, and one-on-one -on -one consultation, um, consultation sessions. You can reserve your spot right now by going to my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. And before we get started, guys, don't forget, um, you can find me covering a variety of nursing topics across my social media platforms, such as TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. All right, let's get started. Take a look. Trigeminal neuralgia also known as tic de la rue. It's characterized by sudden, usually unilateral, severe. Whenever you see that word severe, I want you to hear it like I'm saying it. Severe, brief, stabbing, recurrent episodes of pain in the distribution of the trigeminal nerve. So the trigeminal nerve, that's what's affected. And that's why we... Um, it's called trigeminal neuralgia, not something else, okay? It's a trigeminal nerve. If you look up here, look what I wrote. Sudden, severe, stabbing, those three S's. That's what you need to remember for trigeminal neuralgia. Sudden, severe, and stabbing. And of course, your tri it's the trigeminal nerve that's affected. That is your fifth cranial nerve, okay? Take a look at the etiology and patho, the trigeminal nerve, that's the fifth. Cranial nerve has both motor and sensory branches. The majority, let me move this over for you guys. Okay. The majority of cases result from vascular compression of the trigeminal nerve root by an abnormal loop in the superior cerebellar artery. So what's happening is that fifth cranial nerve, the trigeminal nerve is being compressed. This artery compresses the nerve as it exits the brain stem. The brain stem. Clinical manifestations. The first episode of trigeminal neuralgia is sudden with memorable onset. Why do you think it's memorable? Because that sudden pain is severe and it's stabbing, right? You're not going to forget it. Patient's going to have abrupt onset of paroxysms of excruciating pain described as burning, knife-like, or lightning-like. Here's your trigeminal ganglion, so you see where it goes, okay? Remember, severe, sudden, severe, and stabbing. That's what we're dealing with. So the pain is going to be knife-like. It's going to be stabbing-like. It's going to be lightning-like. Shock in the lips, upper lower gums, cheek, forehead, or side of the nose. Intense pain. Facial twitching, grimacing, frequent blinking, and tearing of the eye occurs during the acute attack, and that's what gives rise to the term tic de la rue. Um, if you go back and watch the video I did on Bell's palsy, and in Bell's palsy, I was talking about how the cranial nerve seven is affected and how you're going to teach the patient, you know, to prevent um, trigeminal neuralgia from happening because uh complication lots of patients who have bell's palsy end up having tic de la rue which we're talking about right now and one of those things i taught you in bell's palsy is that you have to teach a patient to avoid cold drafts to the face and you're going to see in a second how that ties in with uh tic de la rue the attacks are usually brief but they're painful okay they're usually brief lasting only two to three seconds two to three minutes, and they're unilateral, one-sided. Does tic de la rue or trigeminal neuralgia, does that get confused with stroke often? Absolutely not. Because in stroke, patients got facial weakness, right? In stroke, they're, that weakness that, that they have, that one-sided weakness, they usually, they don't feel pain, it's just weakness. But in trigeminal neuralgia, in um, tic de la rue, you feel pain. That's number one. And number two, you don't see that paralysis or facial weakness that you do in a stroke. You don't see that paralysis or facial weakness that you see in Bell's palsy. 
What you see in trigeminal neuralgia or tic de la rue, what you see is pain, severe, stabbing pain, okay? I forgot what my third S was. What was a severe stabbing and sudden? Yep, those three. All right, let's keep going. Painful episodes are usually initiated by a triggering mechanism of light touch at a specific point. That's what's known as a trigger zone along the distribution of that nerve branch. Look at this, guys. This is important. Catch this. Precipitating stimuli include chewing, brushing the teeth, feeling a hot or cold blast of air on the face, washing the face, yawning, or even talking. Any of those um, uh, tiny touches, anything, of, any of those tiny things can be triggering to the patient and can cause that sudden severe stabbing pain that the patient experiences. Take a look at interprofessional care, this box. Management, drug therapy, uh, you expect the patient could to be ordered on, you know, anti-seizure drugs such as carbamazepine, um, they can be placed on Neurontin, a TCA such as uh, um, amitriptyline, nerve blocking agents. Environmental assessment is essential, very important during the acute attack period to decrease tr triggering stimuli. The room should be kept at an even moderate temperature and free of draft because draft, that's like, that's like one of the number one uh, triggering factors for trigeminal neuralgia. Just a cold draft touching that patient's cheek is enough to cause those uh, sudden severe stabbing symptoms. Teach the patient about the importance of nutrition, nutrition, high protein, high vitamin C, okay? Teach them about uh, nutrition, hygiene, oral care, a small soft bristle toothbrush or a warm mouthwash assists in promoting oral care. Why soft bristle? Because remember, just brushing the teeth is enough to trigger that pain. So you don't want anything harsh. Hygiene activities are best performed when analgesia is at its peak. This patient absolutely is going to need analgesia because remember that pain is excruciating. You're going to encourage foods that are high in protein. Um, remember guys, protein doesn't only build muscle. Protein helps with healing, right? You're going to, um, foods high in protein and calories. Why? You need energy to fight, right? Uh, calories and easy to chew. It should be served in lukewarm. It should be served lukewarm and often offered frequently. Why lukewarm? Because cold is a triggering factor and we want to avoid anything that can trigger this intense pain. So guys, the reason I jumped over to Bell's palsy and I jumped over to stroke was because if you're in a nursing program, or matter of fact, if you're studying for NCLEX, sometimes they'll try to compare and contrast to see if you know the difference. So that's why I jumped into stroke and Bell's palsy, just so you can understand the difference between uh, trigeminal neuralgia, also known as tic de la rue, versus your Bell's palsy or a stroke, because there are significant differences and you guys are absolutely expected to know them, okay? So guys, that is your um, trigeminal neuralgia in a nutshell. Please let me know what you thought about this video. Let me know in the comment section what you'd like to see me cover next or more extensively. If you have done so already, please press that like button and subscribe to my channel and go to my website, website, check out the audio lessons that I have available for you. Um, the audio lessons are specifically made for students who are not doing well in the nursing program. Like you have to pass your next test or you're out of there, right? And so you really have to know this information. That is who I made the audio lessons for. So if you fall into that category, go ahead to my website and see if I had an audio lesson for you for your next exam. Go ahead and sign up for um, NCLEX review if you haven't done so already. I made it very affordable just so that you can sign up. Why? I want you to get this information so that when you go take your boards, you pass on your first attempt right? You don't want to do it again. And uh, sign up for a one-on-one -on -one tutoring session or a consultation session if you feel you need it. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. You guys catch me on the next video.